What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. I know it's been a while, but here it is. I got a 1993 Toyota pickup, 4x4, that has been sitting for 15 years and it is a barn find. It was literally parked in a bush behind a home for years, since 2007 is what I was told. Um, this truck is in horrible shape inside and out, but turns out amazing. So make sure you guys stick around for the whole video. And just quickly, I want to address why I've been gone for a little while. So I had two or three videos I was going to edit for you guys and I was pretty much ready, but I left the SD card in a different state um, back home in Washington. Right now I'm currently in Alaska. So when I go back to Washington, I'll upload the three or four videos I got for you guys, which are all banger videos, but would be very hard to top this one. This is a very satisfying result. Tons of satisfying pressure washing clips and interior extraction. So make sure you stick around for the whole video and without further ado, let's get right into it. So after disconnecting the battery cable, I'm going to go ahead and soak down the engine with some gunk engine degreaser. And I'm going to do this while it's warm just to make sure that this really penetrates and gets off any baked grease or grime. Then since this engine was so saturated with grease and grime, I'm going to go ahead and soak the engine down with full strain degreaser. Then I'm going to go ahead and close the hood and let this dwell for a little bit and come back. Now normally I tell you guys to be quick with your degreaser and rinse it off immediately. But in this case, there's a lot of metal parts on this and not a lot of plastic and it's really, really greasy from a leaky valve cover that I had previously. So I'm just going to let it sit and then I'm going to go around the wheels, tires and wheel wells with my full strength degreaser and come back to it in a little bit. So as you guys can tell, the degreaser dried up and penetrated really well. Now I'm going to give it another wet coat of degreaser, and then power wash it all off and do this process as many times as necessary. So to brighten up all the metal parts on the engine bay, I'm going to be using my aluminum brightener, which is basically an acid-based wheel cleaner. And I'm just going to soak the engine as many times as necessary just to get all the aluminum portions of the engine as bright and clean as possible. And since some of the aluminum was so tarnished on this engine, I actually had to use a wire brush around the intake um, and scrub it down and repeat this process multiple times until I got a good result.
So to loosen up some of the algae or lichen or whatever you want to call it off the paintwork, I'm going to be using my degreaser diluted 5 to 1 along with my pressure washer and makes for some really satisfying clips for you guys. So enjoy. So in case you guys are wondering um, why I skipped the wash on this is because my camera actually died after power washing all the moss off. Um, it took a really long time so um, my camera died and then I forgot to charge it so kind of skipped out on the soap wash so sorry about that um, but there will be some pretty good clips of the interior right after this. And once again I'm going to take my aluminum brightener and go around all the wheels uh, and chrome pieces on the truck with a soft bristle brush. Just loosen up any surface rust or any damage that the algae left behind. I actually done a really great job as you guys will see in later clips. So another challenge with this detail was trying to get the seats to come out and that was a job in itself. The bolts were so rusty that I couldn't even loosen them like at all. I tried WD-40 on the other side and literally almost twisted the head off the bolt. So I didn't want to risk breaking the bolt in the seat track and making a bigger issue. So I just left the seats in 
and use compressed air um, and shove my hand in there as much as I could with a drill brush and the vacuum wand. And this was a lot harder with the seats in. I always recommend taking seats out, especially when they're this dirty. But I had to do what I had to do and just leave them in and continue with the detail. So as you guys know, I always use my Tornador um, to loosen up any uh, debris out of carpets, but I am working out of a different shop today, as you guys can see. I'm not currently in my Washington shop. I'm actually in Anchorage, Alaska right now. So um, here I'm going to be working out of a different shop until I go back. But I don't have all my tools with me here, so I'm kind of just working with what I got. But to get the same result, I'm just using some compressed air, uh, my crevice tool on the vacuum, and then a stiff bristle drill brush to loosen up any debris out of the carpets before extracting. As for all the interior panels, I'm going to be using an all-purpose cleaner diluted about 8 to 1 and using heavy saturation and multiple different brushes to get in every crevice possible and then wiping it down with a microfiber and compressed air.
And as for extractor, I'm gonna be using a Bissell Spot Clean Pro. Um, I don't have my Thermax with me, obviously, because I'm not in my regular shop, as I said earlier. But you are able to get professional and really nice results with this machine. Just takes a bit longer. It's gotta be a little bit more patient, but it does do an amazing job, as you guys will see.
So here I'm going to be using a Griot's Garage. Uh, I believe it's called a Speed Clay. I might be wrong. Um, just going to go around the whole vehicle with some spray wax and a clay bar and make sure there's no dirt or debris on this paint left over so I can get it ready for paint polishing. As for compound, I'm going to be using some Meguiar's D300 Correction Compound, and I did later switch to a maroon pad um, by Meguiar's. It's a low profile, heavy cut pad, and it's good for oxidized paint without taking off too much. Now here I wasn't aiming for perfect results, just trying to get as much shine as possible and get some of the oxidization off this paint, as this paint was really thin and I didn't want to risk burning through in multiple spots. Um, so this combination was about the best that I came up with, and as you guys will see, it did provide a pretty good result. So after this, my uh, camera actually died and I only have one battery right now. So that tends to suck really bad. Um, I left my other camera equipment back in Washington. As I said earlier, all my stuff is back there. But anyway, so I did use some Grills Garage on one ceramic wax to coat the whole truck with a polish pad and it came out really nice. Um, the reason I didn't go with a second step like a regular polish was because I felt like the paint came out good enough and I just wanted to give it some protection for later on. And then for all the plastics on the interior, I'm going to be using some 303 Aerospace along with a microfiber um, applicator and just going to go over every spot of the interior to make sure it's all protected from any UV rays and give it a nice original shine. As for tire shine, I'm going to be using an aerosol base. Now, I'm not a big fan of using aerosol based dressings because they always go on the paint. Then I have to spray wax the paint one more time to get any smudges off. So they are pretty annoying, but this does a really good job on old tires. It makes them look good. And then if you're wondering why the center caps was off in the back, um, I actually touched them up behind the camera and just put them back on to give it a nice fresh look. And to get any smudges or overspray from the tire shine off this paint, I'm going to be using the two rag method and some spray wax and just going around the whole truck. And this will add a little bit extra luster to the paint and some extra protection. So that's always a good thing. And then after this, I just went ahead and wiped the glass inside and out. Here come the before and after results. Hope you guys enjoy.
that's about going to wrap up the video, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. Sorry it took me so long to come back with another video. As I said, I pretty much let you guys know, but the uh, all of my other videos are currently on an SD card in Washington. I'm in Alaska, so we'll be posting more frequently. I have about four, three or four videos coming up that are going to be really great transformations just like this one. So if you guys are new to the channel, make sure you're subscribed um, before you head out because I will be having some pretty nice barn find videos. I have tons of those on the channel. Um, I do have a 67 Fastback coming up. I have a 91 GMC Cyclone, so that's going to be a cool video. And a couple others. So make sure you're, you watch the channel and keep an eye on it. Don't sleep on us because we're not gone yet. So go ahead and subscribe. Make sure you hit the bell icon and leave this video a big thumbs up. And I appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.